from Milpitas, California, at the edge of Silicon Valley, it's The Cube, covering autonomous vehicles. Brought to you by Western Digital. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are at the Auto Tech Council uh, Autonomous Vehicle event at Western Digital, part of our Data Makes Possible program with Western Digital, where we're looking at all these cool applications and a lot of cutting edge technology that at the end of the day, it, it's data dependent and data's got to sit somewhere. But really what's interesting here is that the data, and more and more of the data is moving out to the edge and edge computing and nowhere is that more apparent than in autonomous vehicles. So we're really excited to have maybe the best title at Western Digital, I don't know. Chris <laughs> Berge, VP of Product Marketing, that's not so special, but all the areas that he's involved with, mobile, compute, automotive, connected homes, smart cities, and if that wasn't enough, industrial IoT. Chris, you must be a busy guy. Hey, we're having a lot of fun here. This data world is, uh, is an exciting place to be right now. So we're here at the autonomous vehicle event. We could talk about smart cities, which is pretty interesting, actually ties to it and internet of, of things and industrial internets, but what are some of the really unique challenges in autonomous vehicles that most people probably aren't thinking of? Well, I think that we all understand that really autonomous vehicles will be made possible by just the immense amount of sensors that are being put into the car. Um, not much different than as our smartphones or our phones evolved from really not having a lot of sensors to today. Smartphones have you know, many, many sensors, right. whether it's uh, sensing your face, gyroscopes, GPS, all those kinds of things. The car is having the exact same hap thing happen, but many, many more sensors. And of course, those sensors just drive a tremendous amount of data and then it's really about trying to pull the intelligence out of that data. And that's really what the whole uh, artificial intelligence or autonomous is really trying to do is, okay, we've got all this data, how do I understand what's happening in the autonomous vehicle you know, in a very short period of time? Right, and there's two really big factors that you've talked about in some of the other uh, things that you've, you've done. I did some homework and you know, one of them is the metadata around the data. So there's the raw data itself that's coming off those sensors, but the metadata is a whole nother level and a big level, and even more importantly is the context. What is the context of that data? And without context, it's just data. It's not really intelligence or smarts or things you can do anything about. So that, that baseline sensor data gets amplified significantly in terms of actually doing anything with that information. That's correct. I mean, I think, you know, the, one of the ones that I, examples I give, it's easier for people to understand is surveillance, right? We're very familiar with walking into a retail store where there's surveillance cameras and they're recording in the case that, you know, maybe there's a theft or something goes wrong. But there's so much data there that's not actually being processed, right? How many people walked into the store? What was the average time a person came to the store? How many men? How many women? That's the context of the data, and that's what really a, would be very valuable if you were, say, an owner of the store or, or a regional manager. Right. So that's really pulling the context out of the, out of the raw data. Um, and in the car example, autonomous vehicles, you know, hey, there's going to be some, there's something, my sensor is seeing something, and then, of course, you use multiple sensors. That's the sensor fusion between them of, hey, that's a person, that's a deer, oh, don't worry, that's a car moving alongside of us and he's staying in his lane. Those are the types of decisions we're making with this data and that's the context. Right, and even the, they had a, in the earlier presentation today the reflection of a car off the side of a bus. I mean, th these are the, the nuanced things that you know, aren't necessarily obvious when you first start exploring. Well, and we're dealing with human life. I mean, so obviously it needs to be right 99.999 you know, plus percent. Right. Um, so that's the challenge, right? It's the corner cases and I think that's what we see with autonomous vehicles. I mean, it's really exciting to see the developments going on, and, and of course there's been a couple challenges, but uh, you know, we just have so much learning to do f to really get to that, you know, the, the fifth nine or whatever it is from a probability point of view. And that's where we'll continue to work on those corner cases. But the technology is coming along so fast, um, it's just, a, it's mind boggling how quickly we are starting to attack these more difficult challenges. And we'll get there, but it's it's going to take time, like uh, like anything. Right. The other really important thing, right? Especially now we're in the age of kind of the the rise of cloud, if you will. You know, Amazon it's going bananas. Google Cloud Platform, Microsoft Azure. So we're seeing this huge move of cloud and in, in enterprise um, IT. But in a car, right, there's this little thing called latency and this other thing called physics where you've got a real issue when you have to make a quick decision based on data in those sensors when something jumps out in front of the car. So really kind of the rise of edge computing and moving so much of that store compute and intelligence into the vehicle 
and then deciding what goes back to the car to retrain the algorithm. So it's really a, a shift to kind of back out to the edge, if you will, dependent because of this latency issue. Yeah, I mean, they're very complementary, right? Um, but there's a lot of decisions you can make um, locally. And obviously, there's a lot of advantages in doing that, latency being one of them, but just cost of communications. And, and again, what people don't necessarily understand is how big this data is. Um, you know, you, you see statistics thrown out there, one gigabit per second, two gigabits per second. I mean, that is just massive data. Um, at the end of the day, actually, in some of the development, it's pretty interesting that um, we have the develop car developers actually FedExing the terabyte drives that they've captured data because it's the mo it's easiest way for them to actually transfer the data. I mean, people think, oh, internet connectivity, no problem. You try to ship 80 terabytes in a you know in a cost-effective manner, FedEx ends up being the best shot yeah. right now. So it's pretty interesting. <laughs> the old sneaker debt, that is pretty funny. Um, but the, but the the quantities of this data are so big. I was teasing you on Twitter earlier today. You know, I think we took it up to an exabyte, a zettabyte, a yoda byte, and then the the crowd responded, "No, it's a brontosaurus byte is even bigger than a yoda byte." <laughs> but it's like, but it's just you know, we were at Flink Forward earlier this week, and really this whole idea of stream processing. You know, it's really taking new approaches to data processing to be able to take all that stuff in, in real time, which probably state of the market now is financial trading and, and advertising markets. But to do that now in a car where if you make a mistake, there's really significant consequences is a really different challenge. It is. And, and, and again, that's really this advent of the sensor data, right? The sensor data is going to swamp probably every other data set that's in the, in the world. And, but a lot of it's not interesting because you don't know when that interesting event's gonna happen. So what you actually find is that you try to put as intelligence as close as you can to the data and storage, you know, and again, storage may be 30 seconds to, if you had an accident, you wanna be able to go back 30 seconds. It may be lifetimes, it may, you know, so just thinking about these data flows and kind of what's the half-life of the data relative to the value. Um, but what we're actually finding with many of the machine learning is that people that we, data we thought was not valuable, data we thought, oh, we have the right amount of granularity. Now with machine learning, we're going back and saying, oh, why didn't we record at, a, at even higher granularity? We could have pulled out more of these, um, more of these trends or more of these um, corner cases. So, you know, I think that's one of the challenges enterprises are going through right now is that everyone's so scared of getting rid of any data, right, right. yet there's just tremendous data growth. Right. So, and we're sitting right here in the middle of it as Western Digital. Well, thankfully Digital, for so. you guys, right, you're going to store all that data. And, and it is really important, though, because it used to be a – it's funny to me. It used to be a sample of things that happened in the past is how you would make your decisions. Now it's, it's not a sample. It's all of what's happening now. And hopefully you can make a decision while you still have time to have an impact. So it's, it's a very different world. But sampling is going away when, in theory, you don't know what you're going to need that data for. And you have the ability yeah. to store it. Yeah, making real-time decisions, but then also learning how to – use that decision to make better decisions in the future. That's really where Silicon Valley is focused right now. All right, Chris, well, you're a busy guy, so we're gonna let you get back to it, because you also have to do IoT and <laughs> industrial internet and mobile and compute, so. And I try to eat in between there, and You too, try to yeah. eat, and hopefully you see your kids Friday night, so hopefully you Absolutely. take your wife out to a movie tonight. All right, Chris, great to, uh, great to see you. Thanks for taking a few minutes. Thank you very much. All right, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE from Auto Tech Council Autonomous Vehicle Event. Thanks for watching.